welcome back it is time now for us to enter into the manipuraka chakra the manipuraka chakra is located in the navel region in sanskrit manipura means the city of jewels this chakra is locked by worry and depression it can be made to flower by clarity of thought and continuous positive thinking this chakra is related to constant worry let us analyze what worry is can anyone tell me what worry is swami ji we get worried when we think of our business problems or our children or our health what you are saying are the reasons for worry i'm not asking you the reasons for worry i'm asking you what is worry if i ask you the reasons for worry the session will never end each of you will be ready with a long list swami ji my business is down swami ji i have no peace of mind at home swami ji i have so many problems that you can't even imagine I don't have children that is my worry swami ji my children are my worry and so on and so forth we all have so many worries all the time and if we can't find any worries we will start worrying about not having any worries we start feeling insecure and so we start thinking about what we can worry about i tell you it is a fact some elderly retired people come and tell me Swami ji we don't know what to do our children are married and settled in their own houses they don't ask us for anything we don't know what to do there is nothing to think about there's no point in living anymore swami ji we want to die peacefully they don't know what to do because they don't have any worries they try their best to think of something that might keep their minds occupied but there's nothing coming up to keep it occupied and this is new to them because they have all along been occupied with some worry or the other with some thought or the other before defining worry i just want you to understand that whatever be our culture our financial status age or anything else we all have one thing in common and that is worry if i ask you why you worry you will list out so many reasons you always think that worry is caused by external matters you always blame the world outside the people around you accusing them of causing worry in you just think if the cause for worry was external there should be at least one person who has beaten all these causes and is free from worries isn't it but is that the case anyone you meet has got some worry or the other whether they are rich or poor married or unmarried with children or without children working or having their own business everyone seems to have worries this is because Although we think that the cause for worry is external actually the cause for worry lies deep within ourselves this is the truth this is the reason why everyone has some worry or the other all the time so we come back to the same question what is worry if you look deep inside you will find that worry is nothing but your response to an event whether a situation makes you worry or not depends entirely on how you choose to react to that situation and worry has become a constant inner chatter within you all the time causing uneasiness in you for example suppose your friend gets a new job and comes and tells you about the perks and benefits of the new job and he talks enthusiastically to you about it how will you react unconsciously you will be chattering inside yourself you will start thinking oh he's got a new job 
he is enjoying so many benefits what about me what will my wife say if she hears these perks and benefits better not allow this guy to meet my wife else i will get into trouble should i start looking for another job what if i don't get it nothing ever works out for me anyway this is worry worry is what happens when you constantly check yourself against external frames of reference and chatter within yourself about it and over time this sets in as your mental makeup am i doing as well as the neighbors how can i impress my boss what will my children think all the time we need to get approval from others whether it is family or work or society this is a major portion of our worry our whole life is nothing but a process of collecting certificates from others if others don't keep giving you certificates good husband good employee good neighbor then we worry that our life has become worthless we form our personality only from others certificates we have all stopped trusting ourselves that is the problem as a child each of us is strongly centered in our own being have you ever seen any child worrying about what people will think of him no a child is such a treat to watch he has no worries and he is total in whatever he does because he is not worried about what others will say about him as we grow up society plays this idea constantly upon our minds society teaches us to evaluate ourselves by the ideas and opinions of others parents teachers friends even strangers society makes us dependent on external support certificates from others for each of our actions and words this is why we are all the time worried about what others will say about us also when you worry about something you feel you have a definite point of reference against which you can measure yourself against which you can function that is why worrying gives a direction to your life without worry you feel as if your being has no access about which to move this is why we are actually secretly in love with our worries let me tell you a small story three men were sitting abandoned on an island they did not know for how many years they had been there suddenly they found a bottle and they picked it up they rubbed their hands over it and a genie appeared before them they were shocked the genie told them thank you for freeing me from this bottle each of you may ask for a wish and i will grant it for you they were very excited and they thought for a while the first man said i want to marry my girlfriend and live happily the genie said all right your wish will come true the first man disappeared from the island and the genie looked at the second man the second man said i want to become a wealthy businessman the genie said all right your wish will be granted the second man disappeared and the genie asked the third man what he wanted the third man said i am going to miss my two friends who have been with me all these years i want to be with them the genie said all right and it disappeared leaving the three men just as they were on the abandoned island we are all so fond of our worries we claim that they give us misery but we are so attached to them you will not be ready to believe if i tell you that you love your worries but it is a fact people come to me and say my business is going from bad to worse swami ji last month i suffered heavy losses and next month i know it's going to be even worse i ask them 
if you already know that why don't you close down your business right away why should you suffer but they are shocked when i say this they ask in disbelief what are you saying swami ji what will i do then without a reason to worry your ego loses its reason for existence that's why you choose to remain in the dimension of misery when you are in worry you feel you are someone you feel you are a solid entity because you are solving worries and you are thinking about them all the time whereas when you are free from this constant worrying you are in bliss but in this dimension you are a nobody there is no material to keep you occupied there is nothing to solve you feel insecure like a non entity to enjoy a worryless state you need to first drop your ego about wanting to be a solid entity and the thing about worrying is first of all worry itself is your decision to give food to the mind and keep it occupied on top of this each person thinks that only he has got a lot of worries and that only he is unhappy and that everyone else is very happy but the strange thing is that everyone on this planet earth feels that he or she is the most unlucky unhappy person how is this possible a small story in a certain kingdom it came to the king's notice that everybody in his kingdom was depressed because each person felt that they had the maximum worries and no one else had any worries so the king announced a worry exchange offer where people could bring in their big worries and exchange it for someone else's small worries a big space was made ready and in the center of it a huge worry pot was placed anybody who wanted could come and dump his own worries inside it and pick up any other worries they wanted only thing they had to pick up some other worries the whole kingdom gathered for the event the people moved around and met each other and started talking to each other about their worries after a long time the event was declared open for the worry exchange a lot of time passed and not a single person came forward to drop their worries in the pot after all that interaction everyone thought that their own familiar small worries were much better than the others worries i tell you most of the time we talk in the air without getting down to the actual facts if we get down to the bottom of our so called worries we will understand that we are simply magnifying things that are not so bad after all all right now let us analyze what actually happens inside your mind when you are worrying just watch your mind when you are worrying about something you will see that a continuous stream of thoughts is being generated in your mind totally disconnected thoughts and usually negative thoughts an influx of negative and repetitive words will be like a current in your mind you see we are used to only two kinds of speech speaking out and speaking in speaking out is speaking to others what we normally call speech or conversation speaking in is speaking to ourselves actually the speaking in is a continuous process that goes on inside us the speaking in is what is called the inner chatter and this is what is called worry worry is nothing but this continuous uncontrolled inner chatter happening in your mind this inner chatter has become your master it has taken control of you it keeps on happening the whole time whatever words you speak out you speak carefully 
because if not society will ask you to be careful is it not but your speaking in is not controlled in any fashion when words that you speak out when words that have volume can be controlled why can't words without volume be controlled you don't control what you speak inside because you don't have self respect you simply say what you wish inside you do we throw garbage on a plate of food no we throw it in a garbage can you treat others like a plate of food and yourself like a garbage can because of this you become indigested with outer conversations there is a break sometimes but this inner chatter is continuous it can drive you mad actually many times speaking to others becomes a way of escaping from your inner chatter that is driving you mad that is why so much of talking is going on in the world people are afraid to be silent because there is a mad house inside them so they meet up socialize talk and they keep themselves occupied what exactly do we mean by this inner chatter just try the small exercise when you are by yourself sit for a few minutes with your eyes closed keep a pen and paper with you don't focus your mind on anything just witness your mind just see what is going on in your mind almost as soon as you close your eyes you will see that there is a continuous stream of thoughts flowing through your mind there is continuous activity in your mind write down honestly whatever thoughts are there do this for 5 minutes then sit down and read what you've written on the paper you will be shocked whatever you have recorded on the paper is your inner chatter if you read it you will see how disconnected and how irrelevant your thoughts are one moment you will be here the next moment you will be in america the next moment you will be in your office the next moment you will be thinking of your children this is the state of your mind this uncontrolled flow of thoughts this is the mind you have entrusted your life to this is the mind that generates all your worries this is the mind that is living your life for you if you simply understand this much you have taken a quantum leap towards freedom from worry and inner chatter a small story one day there was an accident on the road people gathered around and saw that a brand new car had crashed against a wall they asked the driver sir Why are you driving the car if you don't know how to drive properly? Of course I know how to drive, replied the man. I only don't know how to stop. You see, you are also driving a vehicle which you don't know how to stop. Your mind is like a vehicle that you don't know how to stop. Just try to stop your inner chatter even for a few seconds. Can you do it? When you try to control it the gush of thoughts becomes even more uncontrollable because you have one more added thought that you have to stop it you are not driving your mind your mind is driving you to understand worry we need to have a deep insight into the nature of our minds the way to worry is through the mind and the way out can also be only through the mind but we keep searching for answers in all the wrong places we search outside all the time without looking deeply into the root of worry we think oh if i had more money all my worries will be over if i was more good looking if i had a better job if i had this if i had that it is never ending the solution cannot be found in outer world things it can be found only inside ourselves a small st- a small story 
Buddha had 10,000 disciples whom he used to address every morning. One day, he brought a tightly knotted rope and placed it before them and said, Can someone untie this knot? The disciples came forward, pulled and pushed at the knot, but could not undo it. One intelligent disciple then came up, looked at the knot for a while and undid it easily. You have to look at the knot and see how it has been created, how the knotting has happened. Once you do that, you just have to simply reverse the process of creating the knot and you have untied it. Instead of doing this, if you simply pull and push, you will never be able to untie the knot and it will only become tighter. The same thing applies to our problems also. The problems, diseases, emotions, all that you are struggling with are nothing but knots in your system. Once you clearly understand how the knots have been created, you can take the right steps to untie them. Worry is closely related to the Manipuraka Chakra, which lies in the navel region. Negative thoughts directly attack the Manipuraka Chakra. Just do this small test. Whenever you feel negative thoughts coming up, look into them and see where they are rising from. You will find that they always rise up from the navel. Whenever you feel worried, whenever a situation arises that you simply can't handle, the first thing to get affected is also your navel region, your stomach. You can physically feel depression as a weight in your stomach. That is why we always say, I can't stomach it, I can't digest it. This expression is there in all the languages. It is universal. Constant worrying locks the Manipuraka Chakra. So what is the way to unlock this chakra? How do you think we can keep this chakra in a good condition? Any suggestions? Swamiji, we should never get worried in any situation. Just try telling yourself that you should not get worried. What will happen? You will create one more worry of not wanting to worry. Never say stop worrying. It is utterly impossible. Only thing, stop worrying about worry. What do I mean by not worrying about the worry? Just see the worries and don't get disturbed by them. It is only when you get caught in repeating your worries to yourself in a worried fashion does the actual worry take root. This is what I mean when I say stop worrying about your worries. Just let them be. Don't start giving them life. Don't feed them with flesh and blood. When you say control the mind, don't think negatively, it is just like tightening the knot in the rope. Your mind becomes more tense and constricted. This will not help in any way in untying the knot. When you suppress, the memories of these suppressions go directly to your Manipuraka Chakra. When the Manipuraka is poisoned, your actions will have an unconscious violence, like plucking at something, destroying things, misbehaving with your body, fighting with yourself, fighting with others, and so on. These are all subtle expressions of suppression. That is why people say that their stomach is burning with anger or they are feeling heavy in the stomach. There is so much of suppressed anger in you, so much of negativity in you, which in turn gives rise to more and more negativity. What is negativity? Suppose you suffer from a business failure due to some reasons. How will you react? You will feel sad that you met with failure. That is okay. But you will not stop at that. You will feel frustrated and angry and you will allow all sorts of things to enter into your head. 
Oh, this is my bad period. Everything I touch is sure to be a failure. I am a good for nothing. Why am I always so unlucky? What am I going to do? And so on. This is what is negativity. This is what is the root of worry. The thing about worry is, 99% of our worries are never true. 99% of our worries are totally unreasonable. Now gradually over a period of time, this negative attitude, this negative chatter solidifies in your being permanently and becomes a sort of negative influence in everything that you do. And you are so unconscious of the solidified thing in you. This is the greatest danger. To make you acutely aware of this current in your system itself is a big task because it has become your very nature. You cannot see it as something different from you. You have become a part of it. The clinical name for this negative attitude is depression. Some people are less depressed. Some people are more depressed. That's all. The more you allow this chatter to consume you, the more depressed you become. The people who are less depressed feel it only sometimes and that too at a lower degree. Whereas the people who are more depressed feel it most of the time in a severe fashion. But the current is always there for both. So depression or negativity is nothing but a collection of negative thoughts which you speak to yourself. And once you allow such thoughts to enter into your mind, the same thoughts will keep playing back every time you suffer a small failure. It will keep reinforcing this attitude. After all, worrying is only a highly reinforced habit. But it is a mere habit and so you can kick it like any other habit. But you don't think that it is only a habit. You think that it is a solid and serious reality. That is the problem. That is why you are not able to kick it. The mind is an excellent recording system. It stores your negative thought patterns, your complexes, your worries. Whatever you teach the mind, it learns and repeats faithfully. This is how you create a solid mental setup with all your negativities. So be very careful what you tell your mind. We always take so much care in how we speak to others, but we never pay enough attention to how we speak to ourselves. Just like how poor eating habits cause cholesterol to accumulate in your arteries, in the same way, constant worrying can cause worries to solidify in your being. Like how cholesterol creates blockages in your arteries, worry creates energy blockages in your being. Over a period of time, Worrying becomes a part of your nature. It becomes an unconscious act. Even if you reason it out, the low mood still remains. Why? Because all your worries, all your anger, you've suppressed over the years and these are still there as an invisible layer in your being. Worry is the wave that rises from time to time, but depression is the water itself. Now how do we go beyond depression or negativity? Just be aware and alert. Whenever you become aware of a negative thought surfacing, just visually scatter the negative words and see them disperse. If you keep doing this, you will not allow the negative patterns to settle and with time, your mental makeup, your mental programming will become different. It will not be negative anymore. If you go beyond inner chatter even for a few moments, you will become more aware, more alive. Just understand that worry is unreal. Worry is unnecessary. Then the treasures of the Manipuraka Chakra will be unlocked naturally. Yes, do you want to clarify anything? Swamiji, are thoughts a part of the mind or are they an expression of the mind? Your mind and your thoughts are one and the same. They are one and the same. 
There is no difference between mind and thoughts. Mind is thought and thought is mind. The mind is nothing more than the collection of your thoughts, the continuous flow of ideas. And thoughts are no more than the words that you speak to yourself continuously. You see, when you are worrying, allow yourself to enter deeply into it with acceptance and clarity. Don't be afraid to enter into it. Remember, acceptance is not impotence. Acceptance is a great meditation technique. Acceptance releases a great energy. It gives you great clarity and liberation. When you accept your worries, when you enter deeply into them, you will come to a tremendous understanding that all your worries are just your own creations. You will be able to see how your mind plays and causes tension in you. When I tell you, you can understand it only intellectually. When it becomes your own experience, when you have that clarity, you will go beyond worries. Then depression can never touch you. You will go beyond misery. A small story. When I was staying in Calcutta, taking classes on the Isha Vasya Upanishad, a man came to see me. He said, Swamiji, I have a problem. I don't sleep well at night because I live in an area where there are plenty of street dogs. Every night they start barking and they keep barking till sunrise. I'm already a very light sleeper and I simply can't get any rest because of this noise. I told him, Go home and try this tonight. When you hear the barking, just drop the anger the negative feelings that rise up in you. Just listen to the barking sound without resisting. Tell yourself that the dogs are barking, that's all. Don't allow yourself to react. The problem is not the barking, but your resistance to it. The man went back and he tried what I said. After a few days, he came back to me and reported, Swamiji, I tried dropping my resistance as you said. Instead of thinking, how dare those stupid dogs spoil my sleep, I tried changing my thoughts gradually. The dogs are barking. It is spoiling my sleep. The dogs are barking. Some animals are creating some sounds. By the time I came to that sentence, I think I fell asleep. Anyway, I have been having excellent sleep all these days. Thank you, Swamiji. Now this can happen with you also. Any situation can be dealt with if you know how to drop your negativity, if you know how to drop your reaction to it. This is the key to open the Manipuraka Chakra. But the mind is so eager to harbor, to settle down in familiar patterns of inner chatter. This is the basis of the working of worry. The mind always looks to typecast things. It needs comparison all the time between past, present and future. And this comparison, this reference, this judgment, it gives birth to worry. Worries are nothing but familiar dwelling patterns for our mind. These familiar patterns are called engrams in the field of human psychology. Engrams are the engraved memories of the past which serve as an undesirable resource inside us for all our present and future actions. Because of these stored engrams, we react illogically in the present. Why can't we take every moment as it is? Why do we need to link the moment to the past and future and then draw the conclusions? Why is the mind looking for consistency in everything that it sees? And when it fails to see, why does it find it difficult to digest? This is because you are always looking to frame things with the help of your mental makeup, with the help of your stored engrams. And when you can't, you get worried. Have you ever seen me worrying any time? How many of you have asked me how I am able to be cheerful and unperturbed at all times? 
let me tell you the reason is i simply live in the moment that's all i don't carry the past as a reference in my mind i don't burden my mind with these kinds of references i act from spontaneity not from patterns i'm like a river that flows many of you who have accompanied me would have seen the river ganges how the river flows in the himalayas it is so beautiful it appears serene at certain places turbulent at other places crystal clear at times murky at other times where a person encounters it that will be the experience he gets from it can two people who encountered it ever compare notes and complain how foolish it would be the river simply flows to the music of existence that's all it has no plan i am like the ganges i flow without a plan just spontaneously without a worry existence is the master planner because of my spontaneity people pass judgment on me they say i am inconsistent how many of you here have complained at my so called inconsistent words and behavior come on raise your hands see i am sure all of you must have had this thought at some point in time just that only these people have had the courage to raise their hands can you say that the ganges is inconsistent can you say that the ganges should flow in a more orderly fashion no that is the way the river flows that's all you can't pass a judgment on it in the same way i flow like a river and you can't call me inconsistent i live moment to moment while you live with highly interconnected and complicated moments put together what is the result you feel burdened and worried when you have so many moments weighing on you won't you definitely feel heavy in the same way when only the moment is on you won't you feel light all your worries are because you connect the present and the future with past patterns in the whole process you miss the present which is actually a gift to you you continuously miss the present for the sake of the past and the future finally only the future and past remain never the present these patterns that cause the current of worry have become a life sustaining element for our mind a small story two friends went to a theater to watch a newly released film one of them noticed that the other was frequently looking at his watch finally he whispered to him are you not enjoying the film the friend replied i am i'm just wondering how much more time is left to enjoy actually most of us are like this we are so tuned to worrying that even if there's nothing to worry about we worry about how long the state of no worry is going to last when we are enjoying ourselves we enjoy thinking how much time is left to enjoy how will we ever enjoy then when you are continuously thinking this way you are keeping yourself in the future all the time when you try to hold on to any moment of pleasure in the future you have missed the pleasure of that moment do you follow what i am trying to say if you deeply analyze yourself and the others in your own family you will be able to observe what i am saying everyone feels important and productive when they harbor worries actually the more the worries the more a person feels good about himself because his ego feels good at being able to manage so much worry that is why most often you'll find that when you talk about your worries to someone they will say ah this is nothing listen to my problems then you will know what it is this is because people feel superior in shouldering big worries 
by thinking of worries all the time what is going to happen nothing with your 10 worries an 11th worry called depression will happen that's all we worry while we are working be very clear when there is worrying you cannot work and when you are really working you cannot worry where there is worry there cannot be any creativity and where there is creativity there cannot be any worry either worry or creativity can exist at any given time never both creativity is real worship when you create you are close to god creativity comes from the heart worry comes from the mind by going behind the past or by thinking about the future you miss the present moment spirituality is all about dropping the past and living in the present right now you are accumulating the past like anything your burden is becoming heavier and heavier day by day you feel bogged down because of this you don't know how to unload your past you only know how to carry it with you you feel that you have to carry it with you society has taught you that you have to carry it with you you are taught to feel guilty if you try dropping it society tells you that you are ungrateful if you drop the past i tell you it is simply nonsense there is absolutely no need for you to carry your past with you the people who tell you these things don't know that gratitude is something that you have to feel continuously in you towards existence towards everyone as a whole and not something that you feel towards isolated incidents in your life when you drop your past the present will take you by surprise society always teaches you to enjoy the present as past never as present it teaches you to make everything a past and then enjoy it i have seen people who go out on holidays they are all the time with their still camera and video camera in the most scenic places instead of enjoying the nature surrounding them they will be scrambling with their cameras to capture all the scenes through their camera lens they will then go back home wash their film rolls sit on their sofa inside four walls and enjoy the same scenery through the photographs and the video camera they have simply missed that's all and all the photographs are taken and shown to the family and friends just to tell them that they have visited the places seen in the pictures but they never enjoyed the places when they were there they just missed it you all the time enjoy the present after making it a past that is why people say those were the golden days when the days were actually there you would not have surely thought they were golden at that time you would have been saying that the earlier days were golden days this is how you delude yourself with your worries you totally miss the beauty of the present when you are in tune with the present every moment will be a celebration and you will not be searching for past incidents to celebrate when every moment is a celebration you will continue to be in the present because you are celebrating every moment you will never go to the past for celebrating it is such a waste of time dissecting the past for worries because you are a new person every moment every moment you are evolving every moment you are getting updated you are a part of existence and existence changes every moment then how can you dissect past incidents with your updated intelligence it is totally irrelevant never analyze the past with updated intelligence it is a totally foolish thing to do it will only lead to more worry and more guilt every moment you are dying and becoming a new person this is the truth have you ever seen a buffalo or cow worried Have you heard of any plant that is worried? Are they not conducting their lives without a hassle? Why do you worry then? I tell you, 
Worrying is the most unproductive habit of man. Worries are constantly being produced within yourselves as inner chatter and this keeps you unproductively absorbed in it. All your worries are nothing but a collection of words in the languages that you know. And they cause so much of confusion and misinterpretation in you. Words are the root cause of all misconceptions. But what can be done? Words are the only form of communication we are familiar with. I always tell people, when I say something, you understand it as something else. And that is where the problem starts. Each one carries their own dictionary and interprets the words in their own way. A small story. One man told his wife, You know, it is said that over 5,000 camels are used in a year to make paint brushes. The wife replied, Oh God, is it not amazing to see what they can make animals do? This is how most of us relate. That is why I say words cause confusion. Sadly, the only form of communication that man knows is words. He gets caught in words and more words. That's all. You see, words will always give rise to more words. But there is a silence or a gap between one word and the other. A tiny gap not perceivable by us. This is the gap that we need to be aware of. This is the gap that holds what we are actually seeking. This gap is so microcosmic that although we go through it all day, we are blissfully oblivious to it. When I talk, you become intensely engrossed in my speech without much inner chatter. When you are deeply engrossed in my words, I give some gaps and the silence in those gaps is the real solution you are seeking. Sometimes in my lectures, I give long gaps while I am talking. I give those gaps for you to absorb and witness the silence. This can help increase the awareness in you. But invariably what happens? The moment I give gaps, people start getting restless. They start fidgeting with their things or they start looking around and talking, just collecting words once again. Real silence is that which is flooded with only awareness and nothing else. It is not just keeping your mouth shut. If you can get glimpses of this silence, this awareness, you will understand what I have been talking all the time. Now your mind will start asking, how can I stop this inner chatter and thoughts? How can I experience real silence? This thought will start haunting you and it will become one more worry. Try to understand, you can never stop the thinking. The thought that you have to stop your thinking itself is another thought. If you forcibly try to be silent for a second, that silence is not the silence we want to achieve. It is just a forced and dead silence. The silence that we want to achieve is a vibrating, blissful silence. The silence of existence. So what is it that needs to be done? Simply watch the mind, that's all. Be an observer. Don't pass any judgments. Don't resist any thoughts. Watch it with the deep gratitude that it is God's gift to you. This is the first step towards inner silence. Your awareness will slowly grow and make you centered in yourself and increase the silence in you. When I say increase the silence, I mean your inner chatter will reduce and you will be more of a watcher. With that increased silence, there will be more awareness in you and this will become a cyclic process. With this awareness, you will be able to enjoy the beauty that surrounds you. It is not that the beauty came in suddenly. 
it was always there but you were not aware of it you were too busy within yourself and so you failed to see it now with your awareness you will be able to celebrate it suddenly nature will start revealing itself to you in its entire splendor your inner self will transform and when this happens the outer world transforms automatically when you learn to be in awareness you can use your mind at your discretion it becomes a vital tool at your disposal you can use it just when you want to from being a dangerous enemy it becomes a reliable friend when your inner chatter comes down when your tps or thoughts per second comes down for even a split second for that split second you are totally in the present and for that split second you have the ability to access your past and future like an open book when your inner chatter is high your tps is high and you are all the time either in the past or in the future never in the present let me explain to you what i mean by being able to access your past and future clearly when you are at a lecture or a party suddenly out of nowhere you feel that the whole scene has happened before the voices the conversation the place even a few curios in the place all look like a replay of a scene that you have witnessed earlier you are jolted or suddenly you think about a particular person a friend whom you haven't contacted in a long time and that person calls up on your phone you are able to predict what is going to happen in the next few minutes you feel jolted when these things happen to you actually you are jolted into the present that's all and that too accidentally never intentionally you are never consciously in the present you are always in the past or future you move from past to future without touching the present this is the truth but accidentally your thoughts per second come down for a moment and you are jolted into the present when you are completely in the present for even a second your past and future become transparent to you that is why you see these kind of intuitive things happening to you you see our thinking is never clear it is always just association it is never real thinking Let me explain what I mean by association. You wake up in the morning and see a rose that has bloomed in your garden. Immediately, your mind goes to someone who gave you a rose sometime in the past. Your thought then goes through your reaction at that time to the flower, or you start thinking about that person. You then start thinking about incidents that happened with that person. In the end, what happens? you miss enjoying the rose that is in front of you this is how you run behind the past and miss the present this is what i mean by the word association this is the nature of your current mental setup masters masters always live in the present that is why they have access to the vast ocean that is the past and the future for you it is an accident it is just a split second when this happens to you you even feel scared when this happens because you're so used to living unconsciously that when you're jolted into consciousness it is too much reality becomes too much your tps plays a major role in determining how far you are from reality or the present You live unconsciously when your TPS is high. You are so far flung from reality. Understand? Only your doing will speak for you. Your speaking will not do anything for you. Whether you speak inside or outside, it does not matter. Simply bring in awareness and automatically you will stop speaking unnecessarily. people tell me swami ji we went for a vacation and it turned out to be hell i tell you hell is inside you 
you carry it with you everywhere obviously you find it anywhere you go when you live you give hell to others and when you die you get hell wherever you go you want to carry your hell with you you are so familiar with hell that even if you are shown heaven you will feel a misfit there a small story three fisher women went to sell fish one day it became late that night when they were returning home they decided to spend the night in some house on the way so they entered the house of a lady who sold jasmine flowers they requested to spend the night there the lady agreed and they went to sleep in the room given to them the house was filled with the fragrance of the jasmine flowers but however much they tried the fisher women could not sleep they were tossing and turning and they did not know what to do then suddenly one of them got up brought in the empty fish baskets and kept it at their heads and they slept in no time we carry our worries with us everywhere we go and we feel comfortable nurturing them but we also complain that we are so worried all the time we want to be free from something but we are not willing to transform and be free from it this is how self contradictory we are any questions swami ji how can one be free from this what should be our attitude how to be free and what should be your attitude both questions have only one answer whatever you do you should be able to do it with a feeling of bliss that's all you see the space inside you or your consciousness decides the quality of your life this space should be pure and blissful always it has been proven that the consciousness of a scientist plays a major role in the experiment that he conducts it has been observed that the same experiment when done in the same controlled environmental conditions produced different results when done by different scientists they have clearly proven that our inner thoughts control our actions and the results of our actions i tell you now ananda or bliss attracts fortune this is a great truth when you are blissful automatically existence showers and material wealth will start flowing towards you be with a sense of gratitude always the rest will happen automatically simply decide not to feel miserable about anything if any worry or guilt or sad incident comes to your mind just look at it and smile and say no i am not going to be affected by you what will you do simply look at it and say this automatically the incident or guilt will not have any effect over you by allowing it to attack you are you going to gain anything no by looking at it and saying that you will not let it attack you you are only avoiding misery i'm not saying to run away from it i'm asking you to look at it and just say this understand this point very clearly if you try to suppress these thoughts they will keep lurking at the back of your mind and they will threaten to come back at any time allow them to surface but just look at them and tell them that they are powerless you will see that they automatically disappear they will think that it is not worth haunting you and they will simply disappear always remember anything that gives you strength through your body mind or spirit is spirituality and will automatically take you towards bliss anything that weakens you is not spirituality and therefore just don't pursue it this is the thumb rule to be followed never forget 
that bliss is your true nature and one more thing anything beautiful that you see experience it instead of just type casting it with your patterns and being a cold spectator have you seen the sunrise and sunset in the ashram or anywhere else in your place have you ever stood and watched the beautiful transformation of colors and rays of light spreading across the sky most of us either don't know that the sun is setting or we simply say yes the sun is setting so what it sets every day anyway i tell you knowledge simply mars your innocence and makes life dull for you when you see the sunset or sunrise it can be such a beautiful meditation for you instead of looking at it with your mundane knowledge if you become a part of it and merge with it you will see that you are a speck in this tremendous existence that is celebrating you will then participate spontaneously in the celebration but we are dulled by our so called knowledge which is nothing but again a collection of words and another cause for our inner chatter and worry we have collected so many words and we live with these words and therefore nothing surprises us even if god comes to you and says that he is god you will say so what everything is taken for granted because of your knowledge the whole of existence is taken for granted because of your so called knowledge you miss the whole of existence in this fashion you run behind worldly things that give you only more and more greed worry and fear these things only disconnect you further from your inner core they make you look outside instead of inside they make you totally dependent on outer world things instead of your own inner strength they make you sway between depression and joy alternately instead of being centered upon a permanent bliss you feel that everything is happening outside and that you have to run to catch it before it is too late that is why you are always in a hurry always chattering inside yourself that is why you are in a rat race that is why you are always in the future and never in the present knowledge is simply data facts statistics it is simply dead collect knowledge but don't let it control you in any way learn to keep it aside and look at life with awe the mind always tries to conclude to summarize to judge collect information with whatever it sees you want to collect words and more words that's all of what use is it i took a couple of devotees to mathura the birthplace of lord krishna it was so beautiful we went in a boat on the river yamuna reliving the days of krishna i was sharing my bliss with the devotees a pack of highly intellectual people i was recalling the days of krishna showing them where raslila happened and i was filled with such ecstasy and the devotees were with me they were telling me that the tiles in the place look as if they had been renovated i was so shocked at them i told them that i should have brought a few people who had lesser knowledge and more all left in them so that i could share my ecstasy with them knowledge is dead at the end of the day somehow people use knowledge to measure a person's worth the more knowledge you have the more you are respected with knowledge you are constantly living with your mind you can never know existence with your mind you can know existence only through your heart only through love you can know existence and the mind does not know love only the heart knows love the mind knows only calculated love which is not love at all it is just another calculation that you do to satisfy yourself at the superficial level spirituality is all about understanding the perfect harmony the deep connection 
between man and existence. When you understand this and drop your entire struggle, you will just flow like a river. The river will take its course and join the mighty ocean. All you need to do is just let go. I don't mean that you can sit in a corner and you will be swept away by some river. No. You just do your work with the undaunted faith and feeling that there is a life force that is conducting this universe that is taking care of you also which is making the breath in you go in and come out. That is enough. Simply shift the responsibility to a higher authority and relax. You will then live like a king. You will then start listening to the synchronous music of the flowing river, of existence taking you, of the harmony between you and existence. This harmony is what you need to tune into and then all your worries will disappear. Of course, there is no proof that existence is taking care of us. Certain things cannot be proved. Can you prove that this direction is east? No. Can you prove the phenomenon of sunrise and sunset? No. You can only experience it. Because you cannot prove it, can you disprove it? Can you prevent the sun through signs from setting and rising every day? Understand, existence is the only thing beyond logic. If you can prove existence with logic, it means logic is greater than existence and this can never be. One man asked me, Swamiji, should I become a Hindu to become spiritual? I was shocked at the question. I told him that he does not have to become a Hindu. See, be very clear. Anything that curbs your field of perception is clearly not related to spirituality. Spirituality is always all-encompassing. Drop all your notions of I am this and I am that. Keep your life open. This is the basis for spirituality. It is like this. A person who stays continuously in a locked room will not know about the open air and breeze. He will be having such clannish thoughts. The moment you impose these kind of restrictions upon yourself, you will not know about the infinite love and compassion that lies within you. You will only worry and complain. You will not blossom. Buddha was once asked what kind of hell is given to people who are not compassionate. He replied, You cannot put them in hell because they are already in hell. Only when you are in hell, you will create hell for others because only what you have, you can give. A small story. A mother and a son were having a heated argument and she asked him, Do you have any brains? The son laughed. The mother asked him why he was laughing. To that the boy replied, Only when you don't have something, you ask others for it. When we are not peaceful with ourselves, we disturb the peace of others also. We should work with our mind again and again to see what it is that gives us joy or bliss. Be very clear, happiness is different from bliss. Bliss is a beautiful and intense feeling inside you that makes you feel that you are in a different plane of existence. Happiness or just pleasure are most often related to outer world objects and they create pain continuously for us. Happiness is relative while bliss is absolute. Bliss is something that has no opposite. When you are in happiness, sadness is just around the corner. When there is a lot of pleasure, you are on the anvil of pain. But when you are in bliss, you simply are and there is no opposite to it. Happiness and pleasure are like pendulums that are bound to sway and reach the other end before coming back. But bliss is not a pendulum. It is beyond duality. 
it never sways it just is again and again scan your mind and see what it is that gives you joy then simply start following it once something inside you tells you that you are moving towards a sense of permanent joy in you once you feel conviction in yourself reposition and adjust the matters concerning your life orienting them towards this bliss every action or thought of yours should be towards feeling this bliss energy spent will then be energy gained you will be always energetic some people say that they want to be left peaceful without worries the peace they are talking about is not a living peace it is a dead peace it is a lifeless and dormant peace as a result of not knowing how to handle the various emotions in life it is a peace that they crave for because life is too much for them to handle it is like saying sour grapes and moving away real peace is something that is in you all the time irrespective of what is going on outside you are simply happy unto yourself you simply look at anyone and anything like a passing breeze that kisses you and goes by whatever may be the person or thing your peace remains with you people or circumstances do not alter it in any fashion peace is nothing but the bliss that is felt inside yourself when peace is born out of bliss it keeps you and others in a peaceful state once you have found this peace within yourself you will never say things like leave me in peace i want to be in peace etc the moment you say these things it means that you are trying to be peaceful at others mercy which is not peace at all peace is a solid center that develops within you and that keeps you happy unto yourself always anything that happens outside will be just another incident that's all you will not even relate it with your peace the moment you relate an incident with your peace be very clear real peace has not happened in you in our yearly trip to the himalayas some of them complain about the hardships and unhygienic conditions i have told people time and again that just being in the himalayas is a blessing that not many people get and that they just have to enjoy that and leave the rest as trivia somehow people immediately get perturbed and talk about these things two of the younger devotees were once telling me swami ji these people are talking about the hardships and trying not to bother about it but we can't even see the hardships we are just enjoying ourselves all the time this is what i mean when i say that when you are so happy unto yourselves there is no such thing as my peace and your peace whatever it is is that's all you are there it is there and nothing is related you simply move on in the same state of peace and bliss complaining is worry related because you are uneasy and caught up with words if you just see the wandering mendicants in the himalayas carrying a small water jug and two sets of clothing you will know that you don't really need anything more than what you have and therefore there's nothing to complain about why do you complain actually the people who complain are the ones who have been blessed with too many things they don't know what to do and so they complain when you have enough and don't have any major fight for survival you will have the time to complain when your survival is at stake you will concentrate on your work and not complain because if you start complaining then who will do your work in the himalayas it is the survival of the fittest you have to be alert and aware all the time landslides can descend upon you at any time suddenly snow will fall and cover up the familiar trails food and other ration will be suddenly restricted due to non availability and what not 
under such circumstances you should watch the people there they are such innocent welcoming and warm people with not a care or complaint there is a lot to learn from them they don't see anything amiss they just live happily that's all they just rearrange their activities in accordance with what's happening around them they don't worry they don't complain why don't you just carry on with whatever is available and keep moving people who have been born and brought up in india when they go to america and come back they complain about the conditions in india starting from the bathrooms to the roads to what not it only shows that all your exposure has made you more finicky and complaining instead of giving you more vastness and making you blossom the way you should when you understand deeply you stop complaining when you understand that you are not shard because you are worthy of it but because existence simply shards on anyone and anything you will stop complaining you complain because you feel you are worthy of something and have not been given that be very clear no one is worthy or unworthy no one is a saint or a sinner it is all in the understanding and moving in tune with nature that makes you a receiver of existence and its gifts it is always a deep understanding that gives you a shift in consciousness if you are open existence showers existence is continuously showering only we don't know how to be receptive to it we are looking elsewhere all the time we are so immersed in our manipuraka chakra we are so busy collecting words when you learn to be with yourself you can commune with existence but we are never with ourselves we are all the time with people we are all the time with noise we identify ourselves with others not with ourselves we are so afraid of being with ourselves we feel alone and scared if we are with ourselves we feel depressed if we are with ourselves you were alone in your mother's womb and that is your true nature but what happened after that you started thinking that you need people to make you happy you laugh with people you cry with people you talk to people you suffer because of people you don't know how to celebrate with just yourself the moment you find yourself alone you start scrambling inside your inner chatter takes over your worries take over you start thinking of how to create noise or whom to call up and talk to or whom to chat with on your computer all sorts of nonsensical things if you all the time need to be with people and noise you're clearly afraid of being with yourself you are afraid of looking inwards and so you look outwards when you become a meditator you will slowly understand that you don't need to depend on relationships to make you happy you are enough unto yourself when you cannot be in peace with yourself you will remain at the periphery of your being caught in the so called relationships you need to have a relationship with yourself first when this is strong and steady relating to others will become just incidental right now what needs to be at the periphery is seen as a core and what should be the core is treated like the periphery you have to reverse the situation for which you have to turn your gaze inwards you need to establish peace inside yourself for this you need to have the courage to go behind your mind you are ready to give appointments to everyone but not to yourself you give appointments to others because it is ego fulfilling you don't give an appointment to yourself because you are afraid that the truth might surface and you might not be able to take it you are comfortable searching for bliss in all the wrong places and complaining that it is eluding you if you really want to find bliss you will find it but you need courage actually we are all searching for the same thing that is bliss 
but we are continuously searching for it in the wrong places if i ask a youngster what it is that gives him happiness he will readily say drugs he is also searching for bliss for everlasting peace but in the wrong direction we have moved so drastically away from our path that our original thinking system has been completely replaced by our negative thought patterns our life is drastically different from what it is supposed to be by consuming drugs can you find bliss by consuming drugs you are only escaping from yourself and also worsening the situation because sooner or later your health will be in trouble look at the foolishness in the whole thing this sounds foolish to you because it is something drastic this hits the morality scale and so it hits you but your other subtle activities aimed at finding happiness are also similar attempts but on a different scale on a not so immoral scale so you don't think they are foolish whenever you get time do housekeeping of your mind and you will know what i am trying to say just look into yourself with awareness and observe how your mind works how your worries take root we all keep collecting words creating opinions and going over them in a repeated fashion this is how worry takes root and reinforces itself when your son comes home late on just one day you assume that he has probably been with some bad company and that is why he is late this becomes a recording inside you the next time even if he comes home late after attending classes this recording in you will surface and you will react accordingly this not only causes your son to get frustrated but also forces him to resort to truly wayward ways simply to defy you you need to understand that everyone is evolving and fluid then it is not going to help if you are in your own frame of imagination it is easy to live with imagination but i tell you 98% of what you believe is wrong you will realize that there is a big screen between yourself and the other person if you wear spectacles tinted green you will see the whole world is green that's all mohammed nabi says when you see the world as something that something is you when you talk or complain to me about someone you may claim that you are worried and so you are telling me these things but actually you're clearly showing your own mind because you see things only as you want to see them never as they are when you see only what you want to see you miss so much let me tell you something that actually happened a few years back i used to travel every day with the same driver from the ashram to the city center one day i wanted to go to a particular street and recall the street to the driver by referring to a mosque that was near the street he claimed that there was no mosque in that place i tried recalling to him a famous hotel near the mosque but that also he failed to acknowledge then i finally told him that there was a hanuman temple in that place his face immediately lit up with recognition he then went to that street and i showed him the mosque that was right there next to the temple and five times as big as the temple he was shocked he was such a staunch hindu that he had not even seen the mosque in all those months i tell you don't be fanatic or cling to anything in life just think of a river when you put your leg in the river for the first time and you take it out and then put it in the second time is it the same river no the river has changed faces the same water is not there any more fresh water has flowed is it not so don't try to identify yourself with any religion or anything for that matter life is ever changing because of your narrow scope of beliefs 
your spiritual growth gets stalled and curbed you become like a horse that has only a limited view of the road ahead of it a broad perspective is essential in life our forefathers gave us a lot of food but not the tongue to taste it it is up to us to experience this world with joy the joy is in the way you experience it not in the outer world objects themselves this has to be very clearly understood your mental setup is what makes your life joyful or miserable if you are happy with your current mental setup it is absolutely all right but if you feel that you need to prune it a little then somewhere there is a problem you often try to prune your mental setup like pruning a plant a plant that is pruned grows faster either you live with your current mental setup or uproot it and create a new one you cannot dye your mental setup like you dye clothing to make it look different you cannot chisel your mental setup to correct it a complete transformation has to take place else there is always a danger of slipping into the old ways again when you have a clean mental setup you will never worry only when you are confused with complex thought patterns and words you will be worried always i always tell people when you are not sure of yourself you will be worried about where the planets are you will start analyzing which planet is centered where and how it is influencing you the actual problem is you are not centered work on your mind when you have time look in and do housekeeping for it after all you are with your mind 24 hours a day is it not why not then keep it clean i have seen these house proud people who maintain their houses so beautifully they use the vacuum cleaner and keep it absolutely dust free they cannot tolerate even a speck of dust they will clean the carpet till it gets a hole in it what about cleaning the house in which you are living 24 hours your mind you are with it 24 hours every single thought or action of yours involves it you bring in vastu shastra feng shui etc which are all sciences to keep the space inside your house in a pure and energized condition but what you fail to understand is that you need to continuously energize your home only because you are contaminating it with your negativity this is the truth when you contaminate the space in your house with collective negative thoughts with your worries the space starts radiating the negative thoughts back to you and you get caught in a vicious circle of negativity the moment you enter your house how many times have you felt that you are perfectly all right until you entered your house the moment you enter you feel gripped by a force of familiar negative thought patterns this is nothing but your own thoughts that you have managed to fill your house with what do you do then you call an expert in vastu shastra to change the layout of the house or you call a temple priest to perform some fire ritual and cleanse the house or you apply feng shui ideas to your house when these things are done with sincerity they will no doubt do the needful to your house but you have to understand one thing these are only supplementary methods the actual thing is to clean your own self and radiate a blissful mental setup so that automatically the space in which you live radiates that a man was asked what the difference between his past and present was he replied earlier i used to sit on the floor on a mat and eat now i sit at a table you see in the past and the present his mouth is the same if there is no radical change in you your life will seem only this much different like how beauty lies in the eye of the beholder the taste lies in the tongue that experiences it your mental setup defines the quality of your life most often we know that we need to change but somehow we fall back comfortably in the present setup of ours 
we get caught in the same wheel again one side of us tells us that we need to change and the other side unconsciously slips into the familiar patterns again even if you are presented with many opportunities to change you feel cozy in your present state and you miss them this mental setup becomes such a solid reality in you you simply radiate it just try to change it let me tell you if you live with such a solid mental setup there is one more danger in it there is every possibility that your children will imbibe it from you i am reminded of a joke a husband and wife were both pickpockets by profession they would often discuss that if they had a child it would be very prosperous soon they had a baby the newborn baby however had its right hand closed very tightly they could not get to open it at all the doctor attending to it tried all sorts of things and finally took out his gold chain and dangled it in front of the baby's eyes the baby slowly opened its hand and inside it was the midwife's gold ring this is only a joke but understand that as parents you have every possibility of passing on your mental setup to your children so be aware every moment and work upon your consciousness and awareness work on cleaning the inner chatter and framework inside you we always try to control children and make them into puppets children are wild energy we try to box that energy so that it becomes convenient for us to handle them two dogs were walking down the road the first one said to the other my name is sandy what is yours the second one paused a while and said i think my name is no no roger like this dog children also start absorbing and learning from our words and body language when children are very young and they start wondering about something what they do is immediately refer to our past actions or words related to that particular matter and then they form their conclusions based on that so when you are with children be even more aware and try to keep their intelligence alive instead of simply trying to curb them all the time mothers are continuously trying to do this for example if it rains the mother will tell them to get in immediately saying that they will catch a cold a few repetitions of this incident will automatically tune the child's mind towards cold when it sees rain even if it drizzles next time the child will start sniffing actually i tell you man's body is the most intelligent self correcting autoimmune system but somehow we trust our own mind rather than the inherent intelligence of our body there starts the problem and all our worries a small story a father camel was explaining to the son camel the body structure of their species he said you know we have humps so that we can store water in it for days together when we are in the desert the son asked why are our eyelashes so long the father replied to protect our eyes from sandstorms the son then asked why do we have such bulbous feet the father replied so that we can travel fast in the desert dad asked the son what are we then doing in the zoo you see our body has been designed so beautifully if we just allow it to run on its natural intelligence it will function well the moment you bring in your conditionings and impose them upon your body you start experiencing difficulties your worries and mental makeup are the root cause for all disease mental and physical in the himalayas the sadhus or the wandering mendicants live inside caves they are the healthiest people ever come sun or rain or snow they continue to live 
and their body adjusts itself automatically we have to trust nature and the immune system associated with it and understand the master is someone who can give you a new mental setup a rebirth it is something which can be got by simply absorbing the presence of the master when the master's energy floods you your mental setup changes you are reborn you enter into a space that you never even knew existed when you are reborn in this fashion you will be free from the grips of all worries illnesses and other emotions even if any of these happen to you you will be able to handle them with ease that you never even knew before you will be able to become an observer of everything that is happening to you and around you i was watching the television the other day in a hotel where our meditation program took place on one indian channel there was a duet going on from an old movie on another indian channel there was another duet going on from a new movie i was telling my secretary that these two channels only showed that there has been no growth in man's consciousness he was shocked at my observation and he agreed with me the same patterns get repeated again and again like five people kicking a ball around in a closed room at least in the west they go to extremes and explore things and come back there is at least social intelligence in the west if not a growing consciousness familiar patterns can make our intelligence totally dead when i tell people these things they tell me swami ji i understand what you are saying but i am not able to overcome it i tell you just allow my words to penetrate you and create a space in you this is where meditation can help what i do in my meditation camps is i give you the outer understanding and then work on it penetrating you through meditation but people tell me swami ji we have our work to do bills to pay deadlines to meet how do we meditate then i answer them with a simple meditation technique whether you have time to pay your bills or meet your deadlines or not you surely have time to breathe else you will not be alive now you simply add awareness to your breathing that's all just watch your breath that is the simplest and most powerful meditation you can do every time you remember this technique practice it soon it will become a habit when you infuse awareness into your breath you will be in the present moment living in the present takes you to bliss the power of now is a straight way to bliss simply add awareness to every inhalation and exhalation so to attain bliss you don't need any separate time you don't need to take time off and go to any retreat or meditation camp you can continue with your daily activity with the increased awareness that you will be creating your deadlines and other targets will get done much more efficiently meditation is nothing but a shift in your consciousness it is an energy shift in your being it is not sitting in a corner cross legged and straight back and trying to control the mind if you try doing all this you'll only land up with neck pain and back pain you will have one more worry that you are not able to sit and do meditation all you need to do is try to live in the present in the now and here when you are in the present you will feel and enjoy existence when you are in the present you will move in tune with existence when you are in the present existence itself will teach you existence is the greatest master that is what they mean when they say that life is a great teacher when you miss it you take your own sweet time to learn and when you take your own sweet time to learn life gives some shocks 
so that you wake up and learn quicker else you will learn for lives together you see now you are running behind the past with regret or behind the future with anxiety you completely destroy the present because of this pattern what happens is you never act properly you simply react based on your past memories or anxiety of the future when you only react you are not using your whole potential you are simply behaving like a programmed robot you follow blind logic not awareness and intelligence 80% of your energy is locked in the past or future and only 20% is available to you in the present that is why you feel dull and sapped of your energy with increased awareness this situation can be turned around and your life can be lived on a higher plane which is more blissful joyful and exciting Yes any questions Swami ji so you feel that simply by witnessing our breath we can achieve bliss Yes it is a very powerful technique You see when you watch your breath your awareness is intense and no thought can escape you unconsciously When every thought starts passing through your awareness you will automatically not create negative thoughts for yourself you don't have to spend any time in correcting your thoughts the awareness will do it for you your thinking system will automatically get restructured the power of awareness is such that it transforms your thinking system to positive energy you see we somehow feel that only when we have experienced pain we have fulfilled our desires we run till we get pain we run till we hit the fence we are so used to the concept of a fence that even if we are told that there is no fence no boundary we are not ready to believe it we run and somehow hit a fence and feel pain then we stop satisfied in having felt the pain we then feel our desires have been lived out we always feel that we have to go through anxiety and worry in order to be worthy of being showered we are in eternal preparation for worry and pain and then there are some people who create worries for themselves and then drink to forget the worries a very common thing today it is something like this a pig is not able to bear the smell and slush of its own habitat and so plunges its nose inside it you think you have beaten all your worries by drinking when in reality you have actually plunged headlong into more of it we want something but we create self contradictory results for ourselves and then cause more worry for ourselves this is the main problem although we are not aware of it a small story an unwelcome visitor came to a man's house the man screamed to his wife who was inside the kitchen to bring coffee for the visitor the wife screamed back that there was no coffee in the house and that there was no money to buy it either the husband got angry and he started scolding his wife and finally he gave her a slap for not being able to serve coffee the wife started crying the visitor saw what was happening and slowly got up and went away the wife wiped her tears and triumphantly told the husband did you see that i pretended to cry and i sent him away the husband replied well i pretended to be angry with you and made you cry the visitor joined them i pretended to walk away and i have now come back our thoughts are different from our words and hence we lose the life that we are living ramakrishna says uniting our thoughts and words is like doing a penance but what do we do we edit our thoughts and bring them out as words there is so much of calculation that goes on inside before the words come out we see profit and loss and go into the future to analyze before we start talking our personality never gets integrated 
because of this and we remain fragmented people ask me how i am able to talk for hours together without any preparation you see i talk the truth as it is spontaneously that's all i am not worried about exposing the truth i never edit my words for me thinking is talking for you first thinking happens then editing is done on it and only then comes talking the innocence is lost in the whole process and you are caught with so many words you are able to listen for hours together to me only because i am talking spontaneously else you will get restless the very fact that you are here without being bothered about the time passing by is enough proof of what i am trying to tell you when spontaneity happens you just flow without thinking else you stagnate in your own mental makeup you become a one track mind a small story a man was trying hard to sleep but could not because his neighbor's dogs were barking persistently the scene remained unchanged for a few nights he finally decided to talk to the owner about it he went to his house the next day and he complained to him about it the man was unmoved and said nothing i can do about it what do you plan to do the first man replied well tonight i will tie the dogs in my backyard and then you will know what it is just think what foolishness it is to do what the man had suggested he is again and again going into the matter with a one track mind how will he find a solution when you are spontaneous you will never be challenged for even a moment you will come back with a solution instantly when you are spontaneous you will simply jump off any cliff and build your wings on the way down yes any questions Swami ji what would you say is the root cause for so much of worry and tension in our lives the fact that you have come out with this question shows that you want to look deeply into it you see we are continuously having some imagination about everything about the people around us the places where we live the situations that arise the lifestyle that we follow we are continuously fantasizing or expecting things to happen in a particular fashion but reality is always different from this imagination the gap between reality and our imagination gives rise to tension in our lives we have created a virtual world inside us and are continuously looking to realize it in reality the more we have imagined the more will be the gap between reality and our imagination and the more will be the tension we always think that we are getting to the point of realizing our imagination but when we get to it our imagination would have grown further and so we never really get to it this creates disappointment this creates tension this creates worry for us the fact is we are not even aware that we are working with imagination our imagination has become such a solid thing for us that we can't even see it as imagination we are caught up in it be very clear if working towards something is causing tension in you then you are not working in reality you are working in your zone of imagination every moment we are trying to realize our expectation in the world outside if people don't react or respond in the way we imagined we feel let down from minor to major things we are always looking for a match for our imagination this has become an unconscious process inside us which is why we don't understand the cause for tension the cause is so subtly woven into the whole thing that it cannot be made out if you bring your awareness acutely to this point 
and watch yourself for a few hours you will understand how your whole mind works just decide to be a watcher of your mind and the people around you you will see how subtly your mind is continuously creating expectations in every small thing that you see and do and how reality sometimes matches and sometimes misses your expectations how feelings of tension and worry arise within you when this happens just by flooding awareness into this whole thing you can see how your mind plays and creates tension for you once you learn to become the watcher your worries will drop and you will also not internalize any of the outer world incidents when you internalize the outer world incidents you are just creating a larger database of words inside you out of which new worries will arise and one thing when you plan chronologically and work towards realizing your chronological plan without any loss of time then you are on the path of reality if you find yourself worrying more than working and not getting anywhere then you are on the path where there is a gap between reality and yourself it is then time to look into yourself and straighten out your thoughts thinking to plan chronologically is all right but thinking about how you are going to execute your plan is what is not all right this is what is called psychological planning and this is what creates tension and worry if it takes just 2 hours to plan for yourself the remaining 22 hours are available to you to execute the plan why then is the plan not getting executed because you waste more than 80% of the remaining time on worrying about how you are going to execute the plan when you keep repeating the plan to yourself you are in effect draining your own energy into it instead of using the energy to execute the plan you simply waste it how will the job get done and one more thing If you really want the job to get done you will get down to doing it without worrying Let me tell you tension and worry are mere excuses for running away from reality Under the pretext of worry and tension you escape from responsibility Every problem is pregnant with the solution If you really want to solve it you will do it All you need to do is look at the problem with deep awareness and the solution will stand out automatically. When you don't want to solve it but feel comfortable talking about it, you will continue to talk about it and come around it in circles and feel great that you have so much to worry about. The best way to shrug responsibility is to get into a deluded state of mind. a state of worry and tension most often people suffering from depression feel comfortable in that state because they don't have to take up any responsibility they can simply be free from all responsibility a small story a man who was known to be a great healer visited a village very soon a crowd gathered around him he touched a man on his neck and the man who was suffering from chronic spondylosis felt that he was relieved of the pain instantly he then touched another man on his head and the man's headache simply disappeared that very moment he moved towards a man who was on crutches but the man on crutches moved away and said don't touch me the healer was puzzled and asked why the man said I have just applied for my disability benefit claim. We talk endlessly about our problems, but when we are offered an instant solution, we find it hard to accept. When we are offered an instant solution, we immediately feel a big void in us. We feel that there is nothing more for us to do in life. We feel too relieved. 
we find that we are not able to think properly when our problems suddenly vanish because we have never thought beyond our problems all your tensions and worries are actually comfort zones wherein you hide from reality if you really want to get something done what is preventing you from doing it why would you immerse yourself in unproductive tension and worry you do this either because you have too much time on hand or because you want to escape reality or because you feel great in harboring so much of tension and worry that's all so drop all your imagination about your lifestyle people etc and start living in the present moment things will automatically happen remember you can't live in this comfort zone for long some time or the other reality will find you so start living consciously make conscious decisions and take up responsibility for every decision you make it is very easy to go by another's decision and blame them at the end of it don't ever do this it is the most foolish and cowardly thing to do never blame anyone for anything remember only when you are unable to handle something you will blame others for it yes you have a question swami ji how should we be relaxed always when your consciousness is alert all the time you will be relaxed all the time meditation is the key to achieving this state at least at the intellectual level understand this first you will then start experiencing it for short intervals of time these time periods can then be extended and finally become your permanent state i always tell people to find out if a master is a true master watch him when he is asleep a real master will appear like a flower when he is asleep he will be totally relaxed and beautiful to look at when he is sleeping he will radiate a child like innocence when he is asleep an ordinary man on the other hand will appear tensed and tight when he is asleep a master is always in a state of super consciousness and he sleeps only to relax his body when you are continuously in a state of consciousness or awareness you can never be tense only when you allow yourself to fall into unconsciousness in a state of delusion you will create tension for yourself the only way to be relaxed always is to be aware all the time of every single thing happening inside and outside yourself learn to relax with awareness when you are with a master if you allow yourself to relax he will enter you his state will penetrate you if you are closed and tense he will not be able to enter you the word upanishad itself means sitting at the feet of the master if you are able to sit at the feet of the master with an open and relaxed mind he will enter you and work on you with all his compassion no words will then be needed he uses words only to keep you engaged while he tries to penetrate you a master can teach you how to relax when you relax in a master's presence you are actually settling down in your own body you are settling down in your own individuality you feel relaxed in your own personality then there is no wedge inside yourself and you become integrated so practice relaxing in the presence of the master that is the shortcut and ultimate way to relaxation yes you have a question Swami ji do you always feel blissful don't you ever feel the sway of emotions yes i am blissful always 24 into 7 in your own language this is because 
plurality has disappeared from my being when there is bliss there cannot be plurality only when plurality disappears bliss can happen in my being there is no lust or fear no attachment or hatred or any of the opposing emotions the only emotion is bliss it would be difficult for you to relate to what i am saying unless it becomes an experiential understanding for you it will be difficult for you to understand this you might understand it at the intellectual level as of now understand that i am always blissful that is enough the first step to bliss is to become a watcher simply watch life as if it were a drama when you watch your mind will become still when it becomes still you have caught the thread when you experience that stillness at least once you have caught the thread that thread will guide you into periods of longer stillness this stillness is your master the outer master helps to find your inner master that's all when you have found the stillness you will understand that all emotions are a mere play of the mind understand you can never drop any emotion by consciously trying to drop it the more you try to drop it the more attached you will become to it and it will become a torture for you the emotion will haunt you the only way is to watch your emotions as you watch your emotions the distance between your emotions and you will start increasing right now you are so entangled with your emotions that you simply cannot see yourself apart from them when you start watching you will start creating a distance between you and your emotions slowly the distance will increase and one day the watcher will disappear from the scene then you need not put in any effort to drop your emotions they will simply drop of their own accord and you will feel disconnected from them you will no more be able to relate with them they simply disappear from your being a shift in consciousness happens in you you then become a new person when you become a watcher there will be no room for worries or pain there will be only love in you you will then understand the love of existence the infinite love that existence showers on you every minute a small story a man was known to have a very weak heart His family was always careful in telling him any drastic news. One day, they came to know that his wealthy uncle had died, leaving 1 million dollars to him. They were very excited, and at the same time, they did not know how to break this news to him. They were afraid that he might collapse under it. So one of them suggested, "I think we'd better call the family doctor and tell him to handle this." they all agreed they called up the family doctor and told him the matter the doctor said don't worry i will handle it it is not so hard as you think he soon arrived at their house and went into the room and started talking to the man he casually asked him if you were suddenly told that you were given 1 million dollars as cash what would you do the man replied i would give half of it to you doctor the doctor collapsed and died we are ready to see life as a drama when it comes to others but when it comes to us it becomes hard to digest we are always ready to give advice to others i read in a book advice is something which everyone loves to give but no one is ready to take when you can be like a lotus untouched by the waters although deep inside it you have learned to play the game of life understand one thing 
Existence is expressing itself continuously in various ways. Our role is to understand and flow with it with deep awareness. Understand that the whole of creation is flowing in accordance with existence. Then you will automatically drop your worries and anxieties. You have to reach a stage where your core is untouched by what is happening around you. This will happen if you have experientially understood that existence is continuously changing. Outwardly you may express different emotions, but your innermost core, you must be able to continuously see that all the incidents outside are like beads that are strung on the common thread. And the common thread is existence. The thread is what holds them together. Yes, you have a question? But Swamiji, we don't intentionally worry. How do you then say that we bring worries upon ourselves? Worry has become the unconscious state of your mind. You don't have to put any intention into it. It simply is, that's all. You don't have to make a conscious effort. It is there in you all the time. A small story. A woman called up the reception desk of a hotel and screamed for help. The receptionist came running to her room. The lady screamed to her, I can see a man naked across the window in the other room. The receptionist saw through the window and saw a man standing with his upper body bare. She said, Ma'am, only his upper body is bare. How can you conclude that he is naked? The lady screamed, Get on top of the wardrobe and see. So even if everything is all right, we search with a torchlight for worries. We don't do this intentionally at all. We do it in the most natural fashion ever. That is the whole problem. Our state of mind has to undergo a 180 degree change. Another small story. A policeman was going on his night rounds when he saw a cow dead in the middle of a lane. He started dragging the animal towards the adjacent street. A passerby asked him why he was dragging the dead animal all the way. The policeman replied, When I report this tomorrow, it will be easier because I know the name of that street. Because we don't know how to be spontaneous, we are worried all the time. We complicate things in our lives in order to fit it into our framework. We don't live in a fluid way. When you live in a fluid way, you don't have to work unnecessarily. You can simply enjoy and move on. For example, if I now tell you that you should be blissful always, you will start worrying about how to be blissful. You know to start anything only with worry. That is the whole problem. That is why most of the time when you ask me something, I never tell you anything directly or in many words. I simply tell you a few abstract statements so that your mind cannot be put into any track of worrying. But at the same time, I give you the energy to penetrate it with understanding. Yes? Swamiji, then how do we start following what you are saying if we don't start worrying about it? Just absorb the energy and inspiration behind my words without applying your mind to it and start living in the present. That's all. When you apply your mind to it, logic will come in and once logic comes in, the whole trouble starts. Just feel the energy behind my words, what I call the silence, the silence with which I am trying to penetrate you all the time. The silence will ultimately take you where it has to take you. Never try to get into the meaning of my words. Never collect words. Only intellectual nuts collect words and more words. They collect words and get more and more confused. They collect words thinking that they will get clarity at some point in time. 
but it is never going to happen you see whatever i talk even if it seems contradictory when connected and analyzed it is the complete truth for the moment that it is spoken whatever i talk is the complete truth for that moment that i am speaking it but you cannot infer from my words alone so for that moment simply take them in without a question it will give you the energy and intelligence to follow through when you move on with complete trust you cannot worry this is real prayer prayer is not pouring out all your worries and asking for a solution prayer is placing complete trust upon existence and feeling it work for you so don't listen with your intellect learn to listen with deep meditation whatever may be your emotion or path at that point in time just go deep into it and listen to me that is enough you will automatically be filled with energy and made stronger these are all the basic secrets that i am giving you when you cling to my words you will be worried that you might forget them you will start jotting them down i tell you the moment you start jotting down you will miss the whole thing you will neither have absorbed the energy behind my words nor would you have completely taken down my words you will go home with the scribbled notes and a few days later even that will be lying in some corner of your house sometime later even if you find them you will not be able to make head or tail out of it it is something like this let us say you read a book and you retained only the last two pages of it in your hand with just those two pages can you recompile the whole book no in the same way don't try to jot down a few of my words and try to recollect the whole thing just be present completely when i'm talking that is enough Stop worrying about forgetting my words. My words will penetrate you and do their work if you give me your whole presence. The transformation is what is important, not my words. Listen with your being, not with your mind. When you understand and the transformation happens, you will never forget. If you have forgotten, it means that you have not understood. not just my words don't cling on to anything every moment is going past then what is there to cling clinging will only bring misery upon misery there is no point in thinking about the future also it is yet to come what are you thinking about the future will also come in the form of present only so just focus on the present You see when you are in the present you don't choose at all worry basically arises because you are choosing all the time when you decide not to choose at all and just totally accept and drink in the whole experience all your worry will simply disappear you choose because you identify yourself as something solid you feel compelled to choose all the time it is nothing but a play of your ego understand that people ask me swami ji i am afraid when i think that the world might suddenly come to an end so what if the world comes to an end if the world comes to an end and everyone is going to be ending along with it what will happen there will be nothing remaining with anyone for anyone to be worried about you were earlier worried only because there was something in the world to worry about if the world itself is coming to an end then there should be nothing to be worried about is it not but you worry about that also see how self contradictory the mind is it worries if there is something to worry about 
and it worries if there is nothing to worry about also if you look into all your worries with awareness you will understand how cunningly they are playing on you in your unconscious state you will see that your worries are so elusive and baseless you will never be able to pin them down because they are baseless they are not solid actually all of your emotions are nothing but the play of the unconscious in you when you live with total awareness you can never be under the sway of emotions that is why again and again i tell you flood yourself with awareness your worries your words they re- your words they really make or break your life they have got that much power to influence you and to influence others for example when i utter the word cow immediately what happens a figure with four legs two horns and one tail appears in your mind is it not a simple three letter word can bring to your mind a whole image words are that powerful when we don't respect words and use them wrongly we are asking for trouble a small story birbal an enlightened master and akbar his king were walking together on the streets they saw a sandalwood dealer and akbar said to birbal i don't know why but i feel like hanging this man a month later they walked past the same sandalwood dealer and akbar this time said it's strange but i feel like giving this man some endowment now birbal replied after a long pause a month back the sandalwood dealer's business was suffering and when he saw you walking past he thought to himself that if you die the courtiers would come in and buy a lot of sandalwood from him for your funeral pyre he sent out these negative vibrations which prompted you to feel hatred towards him i immediately purchased a lot of sandalwood from him to make tables and chairs for our kingdom today he feels very grateful towards you and you have been struck by these positive vibrations and therefore you feel like giving him some endowment understand that your thoughts have a lot of power in themselves it is therefore very important that you have a worry free and clear mental setup yes what is your question swami ji there are books that say don't sweat for small stuff but small things do matter is it not swami ji when you function with intelligence you will not fall into the category of sweating for small stuff a small story a young man went to visit his friend and he found him scraping the wallpaper off the wall he asked him are you repainting the friend replied i am moving house you see you cannot ignore the small things but you should be intelligent enough to pay only the amount of attention it warrants else you are starting to sweat never listen to people when they say not to pay attention to small things remember small holes can sink a great ship just understand that you need to operate with your intelligence and awareness when you are at it first of all you need to be absolutely convinced about the so called small things that you are concerned about if this is there then there is no self contradiction and automatically you will find the energy to do those things when you are not fully convinced you will not have enough conviction and energy to go behind it and get it done your way it means that your intelligence is not fully behind you because intelligence is energy and energy is intelligence if you are sweating about them then there is something wrong somewhere be very clear 
all miseries arise because of self contradictions you yourself are not fully clear about what you want to do and so you are unable to do it for that clarity to happen you need to nurture your own intelligence when intelligence surfaces self contradictions will disappear and you will start becoming integrated when you start becoming integrated your intelligence will further grow this is the cycle you need to get into this is the cycle that can clear your worries also intelligence is the only way to get freedom from anything that bothers you if you are really interested in dropping your inner chatter and worries you can try a small exercise think of all the things that give you joy make up your mind that you will allow your mind to linger only on these things and nothing else anything else you will give it just enough energy to get it done and then forget about it try this exercise and you will see that you conserve a lot of energy understand that you have given a lot of power to your worries by simply talking about them more and more for example when a housewife picks up the phone she will start by telling her friend that the housemaid did not turn up for the day that is her depression for the day if you are really depressed about the maid not coming and you are really interested in coming out of it then you should simply drop it and finish doing the work yourself doesn't this sound more logical but what do you do you keep on talking about it and expect your friend to feel your depression as well if she did not sympathize with you or if she tells you that this is how life is and you have to move on you will make another call to another friend and tell that friend about how inconsiderate this friend was just think if you really wanted to move on with your life you would appreciate the words of the friend is it not if you really wanted to come out of the depression and move on with life you would definitely spend your intelligence on doing that but why are you reacting differently the reason is you are so comfortable just talking about your worries and not finding a way out of it if you start doing the small exercise i just gave you you will see that all your worries simply disappear and you acquire a new mental setup all together you will find a surge of energy within you because all the energy that you previously spent on harboring your worries is suddenly available to you do an honest check for yourself and find out if you are secretly nurturing your worries and whether you are ready to take on the transformation when you stop going behind your worries you will be able to see how others are helplessly caught up in that cycle you will be able to see how they magnify their worries by endlessly talking about them to people this talking about worry is what i call worrying about the worry only when you are able to watch only when you are able to watch this will it stop until such time you become the watcher you are caught up in the emotions giving so much of power and control to them again i tell you i'm not asking you to run away from your worries i'm saying don't magnify them by talking about them don't expend your energy on them instead address them for what needs to be done so that they stop worrying you address them without any loss of time that's all check yourself to find out if you are starting to feel comfortable with your worries this is the scale to see if worries are controlling you or you are controlling your worries if you are feeling comfortable talking about them repeatedly without taking any action then worries are controlling you 
if you don't linger on them and address them correctly then you are controlling them yes what is your question swami ji earlier you mentioned about drinking my husband drinks ever so often claiming that he drinks to forget his worries what do i do as i told you this is a common problem anyhow if your husband was here it would have been helpful if you analyze the habit of drinking you will understand how self contradictory you are let me try to explain you drink to feel joyful but you end up becoming miserably miserable you drink so that you can be called sociable so that society will accept you but you land up becoming argumentative you drink so that you will look sophisticated but you end up looking insufferable you drink so that you can sleep forgetting all your worries but you wake up feeling more exhausted than ever you drink to experience ecstasy and end up feeling depressed you drink to feel confident but end up being afraid of yourself you drink to maintain the conversation but end up becoming incoherent you drink to see your problems dissolve but end up seeing them multiply all these are the truth and you know it better than i do now tell me honestly is it really worth drinking this is how self contradictory you are not only in this matter but in all matters in life if you clearly knew what you want to do and spent every ounce of your energy in that direction you will grow steadily and experience joy you will then never be self contradictory every time you drink drink with complete awareness let me explain this every time you drink drink consciously slowly watching every movement of yours tasting every drop of the drink watching the reaction of your body to it make it a process filled with acute awareness i assure you if you do this every time you decide to drink you do not have to drop the habit the habit will leave you forever addiction to anything is an unconscious or mechanical process it is not just addiction to drinks or tobacco it is addiction to even religion people who pray unconsciously and mechanically following a routine will find it very hard if they miss even one day's prayer for them it is an addiction and so it causes anxiety when missed just like when an alcoholic misses his evening drink he starts trembling in insecurity the mechanically religious person will feel a big void if he misses his routine prayer the key is to understand the difference between doing things with awareness and doing things mechanically and out of fear doing things in the former fashion will never bring you under any sort of binding it will not bind you in space and time you will be a master doing things in the latter way will bind you and cause misery to you you will be a slave to drop an addiction just flood it with awareness it will transform in the right way remember never think that you need to drop an addiction anything that you resist will persist you simply need to transform it by a deep awareness that's all when you understand the language of transformation you are on the right track you are on the path of openness people come and tell me swami ji it is very inspiring to listen to you talking now we have to apply it in our day to day life and see if it will work be very clear i always tell only practical things never think that i tell things that can't be done in day to day life 
Actually, all I am doing is repeating the same Vedanta, but in different words, in the modern context, so that you feel comfortable listening to it, so that you feel that it is relevant to you, so that you can follow it. And there is another thing. If you read these ideas in a book, they will simply be moving from the head of the writer to your own head. There is no scope for any experience. But when you listen to these words from a master, from someone who speaks to you from the experience of his soul, they will enter deep into you, whether you are aware of it or not. Be very clear, I am not sharing my knowledge with you. I am sharing my experience, my life with you. When I speak from my being, it has to touch your being. It will transform your life. There is no other way. Vivekananda spoke in Chicago, My dear American brothers and sisters, the auditorium thundered with applause. A lady wrote, It was not just the applause. He had won an entire nation. We felt as if a current of love was passing through us, through our being. She later asked Vivekananda how it happened and he simply replied, because it came from within me. Vivekananda spoke from his being. When words emanate from the brain, it will touch the brain of the other person and this is called communication. When words emanate from the heart of one person, it touches the heart of the other person. This is called communion. Communication is not enough. We need to know how to commune. Now I tell you, I talk from the bottom of my heart, so you will listen wholeheartedly. When the speaker speaks with totality, the listener is bound to listen with totality. His life is bound to be transformed. If your life has not been touched by my words, be very clear, I have no authority to speak. You are free to doubt the truth of my experience. If you feel that my words have not been able to transform your life, there is no need to feel guilty. Come out with it. But I tell you, there is no way you will not be touched by me. If you listen with your heart, you will see my teachings working out in your life automatically when the time comes. Only a teacher who is unsure of himself needs to urge his disciples to go back and practice his words. When a master speaks, simply listening will do. Listen totally. The transformation will happen automatically. The Chandogya Upanishad describes beautifully the master repeats to the disciple nine times, Tatvam Asi, you are that. Just by listening, just by listening to the master from his being, the disciple actually attains the spiritual experience. When both the master and disciple act with totality, this is possible. When you are around a master, words are totally irrelevant. Just being around a master in silence and absorbing him is what brings about the actual transformation in you. But what to do? You are so caught up with your inner chatter that it becomes impossible for me to penetrate you. So I speak. I use words and silence you. Why do you think I am talking to you now? Because if I don't talk, you will talk continuously inside yourself, dissecting and analyzing the past, worrying about the future, concluding, judging and what not. If I talk, you will be intently absorbed in my words for fear of losing track of me and I can take advantage of that time to enter you. When I talk, I am actually silent inside. You see, when a master talks, he is actually silent within himself. That is why he is a master. 
but in your case even if you are silent you will be talking inside yourself the inner chatter will be there that is the difference your silence invariably is just inaudible scrambling going on inside you inside you you jump like a monkey from one subject to another without any relevance between them this mad house will be happening inside you and you will appear silent outside that's all so just know how to listen don't listen with your head open your being to me listen with deep trust with total surrender don't scramble to carry my words carry me in your being that is more than enough my presence in you will make the alchemy happen it is time now for us to enter into the meditation technique for the manipuraka chakra this technique will totally cleanse the manipuraka chakra it is called the manipuraka shuddhi kriya please listen carefully to the instructions <laughs> 